Hey guys, it's Marcus101RR. I haven't done a video in a very long time, uh, mainly because of New Year's and everything that's been going on. But today is going to be the day where I start off with one of my videos, my first video for 2015, being 1.3 um, spoilers of Terraria. <clears throat> the first one of the uh, spoilers we've seen is the new mount, one of the three new mounts available in the game. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen so you can all see it. It is supposedly a mount, obviously, but um, it mines at an incredible fast rate, as you can see. It's quite good because if you want to really start, you know, clearing out space, uh, most of you people are still using mods like GameMiki and all that stuff to clear an entire area out. Or if you are still a T-Shock savvy, you're probably using that. So this is going to be actually a mount <clears throat> that isn't going to be, you know, an optional choice, but one of the most important choices compared to having a pickaxe. So that's a good little feature right there. It is one of the three mounts, so the other ones we have no idea what they will be. I'm going through these spoilers as I have them hooked, so you'll have to just bear with me. So, um, biggest changes that they've done now is the water changes, or the liquid changes in this case, because lava is involved as well. You know how it's all blocky and weird, and it's just, and it gets slow on the network when you're dealing with a lot of it. So yeah, you can hear the sound, hopefully. This is what it looks like now when we're playing. You can see it's all blocks and everything. And then they have a second video of it showing uh, how it looks like now. Basically, they added a little bit of more sprites to it to make it look like it's an actual waterfall. Including the fact that you already have a waterfall there. So this is the water, what it looks like. You can see how blocky that crap is. <laughs> Oh yes, and if you didn't pay attention, vine ropes, you know those little vines that are hanging around right now? Those can be used as ropes. Because, you know, uh, you come across some pots, and they have ropes in there, but eventually there's not going to be any more pots, especially if you're running a multiplayer game, and if you're not, you know, setting up your server to be very dynamic, it's not going to happen. But vines are renewable resources, so you just kill the vine, and you've got a rope. So that'll be an alternate change, and it's also decoration, so... If you're complaining, why are they adding this? You can just recolor the rope. Well, there's probably two reasons. One, it's a renewable resource. And two, it actually has a different purpose. Make blends in. Okay, so the other video is the changes. Look at that. Notice how there's no more blockiness in the waterfalls. It's actually smooth, and it actually looks like water in real life. It just splooshes out in a way. So that was the water. Now he's going to show us the um, other one. Again, it looks like a waterfall, and they did it on both ends, as you can see. So it really is much more clear, and even when it goes further, you can see how it fades off, just like the waterfalls that we've seen in uh, 1.2. So there's a huge change. Now there's lava. Lava is obviously slower. <clears throat> so it's a mixture of the waterfalls that we've seen and a mixture of the liquid mechanics. So that will be a major improvement in visual effects. Now there's no idea idea what kind of network performance that will deal with. Will the liquid still, you know, stay floating and hanging? Will there be a priority change? Will they add additional threads for the game to use for the liquids? Because that will be quite sad. I mean, for those of you who are still messing with liquids and all that, liquid starts to freeze when there's too much of it flowing in all directions and in different parts of the world. So it is a network problem, but mm, bandwidth, you could say as well. So that's going to be one of the changes. Not really much of a, a, a bonus feature, but it does give it a better visual effect. And if you think about it, pumps are in this game. So if you create a nice little mechanic of pumps, you could really create a beautiful waterfall style with actual liquid. So 3,000 items are now in 1.3 and possibly counting more. Which is, here's the one, the alchemy table. Uh, people are playing around on Terraria as we speak. <laughs> they just keep messing with the switches. The alchemy table um, is supposedly one of the things that gives you a chance to not consume the items for the potions you make. That's a nice feature, and it has a completely different look. So usually we had to make the alchemy table by putting a workbench and then a bottle on top. 
So this is obviously a 3x3 three three rather than just a 2x2. Two two. Um, another thing that Red's secret project was working on is the expert mode. There's so many people complaining the game is too easy, then we got some people are saying the game is too hard. So now you get the best of both worlds. Those that are saying the game is too hard, well, you get to play the original game before pre-hard mode. And for those of you who say it's too easy, go ahead and crank yourself up to expert mode. Um, <clears throat> the difficulties will be increased. Um, there also seems to be new AI, bosses with new AI, and mechanics. And probably a few things change too, maybe health and something like that. Or damage reduction, you never know. Uh, so that'll be one of the big features um, for this update, which maybe stops the complaining of people saying the game is too easy. I've never heard of game being ever too easy, but it's all about practice and skill and strategy. Moving on to the next spoiler that I have on the list is the, this is actually more recent, the, um, I don't know how many of you people watch Neon Cat, but this is basically what this is. It's a bunch of people, there's no sound. Oh, there is sound, good. It's actually pretty loud. I missed that part. Okay, so we got some cool new features here. Uh, you can see there's a change of blocks, a huge amount. Of, this is a beautiful structure, by the way. So, also, you're able to teleport through a wormhole, which is something that's cool. And you can see Neon Cat Party. This looks like a weapon that is extremely powerful, like the legendary, um, well, Zanks just killed everybody. How nice. But let's go back quickly on that video and, and try to freeze some of the things we've seen here. So we can see the alchemy um, station there. This obviously looks like lunar um, meteorite. Maybe something of that that relates to the lunar event. So these are the, the blocks and stuff that you'll gain from that. Because this, this looks like a darkish style lunar structure. And it's very well done. <laughs> We don't know who these people are, but these are the beta testers. Now, a few other features you see here is time. How much time we're right now in? How many enemies are nearby? What degrees in the direction of the middle of the spawn point you are? And um, the degrees of the surface. So, I don't know if this is actually an item that does this, or this is actually now provided. Because, as you know, there is an item that tells you exactly how deep you are uh, and the coordinates and everything. This, I think, is more generic, so you're actually going to see I, definitely 10 enemies nearby. If this is an accessory, I think a lot of people are going to complain, oh great, so one accessory goes away. Now we still don't know if there's going to be more accessory slots or not. There's just going to be five. And I know summoners and magic uh, classes are one of the ones that fall back on that, but we'll see. So that was one of the interesting things here. You can see the numbers go down as they're moving. So here they opened a chest with all the little lunar stuff. Um, I don't think they're going to hold their mouse over it. So there's not really a wait. Sticky bomb. Wormhole potion. Here it is. The wormhole potion teleports you to a party member. Click their head on the full screen map. Now, did he really do that? Yeah, he pressed tab and then, and then just teleported to it. Now here's another feature that we just see here, um, deposit all. Um, usually when you deposit all, everything that's not in your hotbar gets deposited. Uh, in this case, as you can see, you mark the items you don't want to be deposited, and then everything that isn't marked will go into the chest. And that's very nifty for people that are, well, trying to avoid to have all their items get stored, you know. I don't want this item being stored, so please leave it in my inventory. There you go. That's the feature that's um, included in this. Um, ooh. Okay, so he's going to click on one of the characters down here where they go play with their... Oh, another little feature is a new hook. Probably one of the lunar hooks that we see. Okay, somebody's fighting a creature down there. I am on a server right now. And it was quite funny. So, actually... This is what I'll do. I'll just get out of the game, so that, that's annoying. So a new hook, with Zanks killing everybody. Uh, it also tells you when you're killed how many items you've dropped, how many silver, popper, you know, the money. So that's an interesting feature there. So this will be a, this is probably a big update, it kind of gives you all the spoilers. If you missed it, then you know what's in. So there's a new hook, there's new blocks, there's new furniture, there's, um, a, feat, a potion that's nice to teleport around. I feel like there's a lot of Maple Story stuff in this update. 
and I'm only saying this because it, I've played Maple Story. I haven't played any other games, but other MMOs do the same thing. So we'll get into that a little more of what, what I'm talking about here. Biggest changes we've seen is... This is one of Zank's posts that she's able to make purchases with the NPCs without having to go to your piggy bank. Back then, you decided, okay, I'm going to store my money in my chest or in my piggy bank, particularly the piggy bank because this is what, what's being affected here. Your money is in there, but hey, in real life, you've got a credit card or a debit card and you've got your money in your bank. So when you go to your store, you just slide the card and you buy stuff. This is basically the essential of this. You're buying something from the NPC even though the money's not really in your inventory it's in your piggy bank so that makes things a lot more improving for quality of life so this is something that Zanx is actually happy with and I believe a lot of people are gonna be happy with it too I mean if you've got a huge map and some of these servers do not have piggy banks around you'll be like oh crap so that's that's a good feature right there um, this was actually the enhancements for the interface, which I wanted to get to, and I should, but we'll just pass on to that next one. Um, a new track for the game, which apparently is amazing. So this will be an interesting thing. Now we know that um, 1.2.4 was released sometime in May. This is a new track, so obviously the, the, track, the guy that's making these tracks is making new music, obviously for the lunar event and all the other things that are happening. There's going to be other biomes, so maybe they will have a little music too. So this was one of the posts. If you missed that from Zanks, there's new music included. Okay, another update is obviously a <coughs> funny thing. This is where the new feature comes in. Being able to send your items into the chat box. And you hold over it, and you'll see what you got. Now, here's a couple of questions. What do the other people see? Like the weapons particularly that she's posting. Are these weapons going to inherit what you have or what the player has. For example, if player one, like Zangs does right here, boasts an item and it has, let's say, what does it have? 150 damage? Let's see what it says. Uh, 200! Holy crap, I don't even want to know. 200 damage. Now, based on what you're wearing, armor with melee boosts and all that, what about the other player that will hold the mouse over that item and sees it. Will that game transmit based on their equipment or the equipment of the original poster? I That's a little bit of a, a, a question going back and forth. Would you rather see what they really have in power or would you rather see what the item would be like if you were to use it? In my opinion, I'd say what it would be like when I'm using it. So whatever items I'm wearing, the damage will be based on that. So you can show the items, how many of each items you have, and weapons, potions, etc., etc. So you can pretty much show that. Another little item is the uh, little scarecrow looking thing, the dummy. And basically you just hit it with stuff and you get to see what kind of effects the weapon has. In addition, we see pots replaced with um, these, what do you call them, uh, flower beds. So now you have a way to make your flower bed look more interesting for houses for example and of course a new campfire which doesn't seem to have a buff effect as far as I know but of course she has the inventory uh, thing open so we can't see if that actually gives you a buff or not so that's one of the big features that we see here uh, let's see what did I miss this was a, a small spoiler right so here's an uh, <coughs> Now this is something that she's added to the list, and the thing is, clicking your inventory, your item in your inventory with like shift, and it automatically goes into the chest. Right now, regardless of whether you have your chest open or not, if you shift click, it goes into the trash bin. And if you shift click another item, that last item is gone. So this is probably a feature that a lot of people have requested, including me, that when you shift click, your item in a chest it gets when your chest is open it goes into the chest rather into the trash bin well uh, in this case somebody made a suggestion to be a right click with control or something like that um, same thing but I think shift would just be the generic way of doing it because shift is being used for a couple of things <clears throat> so that's that one uh, let's see what we got here the um, well we've seen that one the cat thing but there's a couple updates that she's considering as a suggestion 
Uh, pink gel. I'm not exactly sure what the pink gel was, but let's go ahead and click on it. Uh, pink gel was supposed to be... Okay, here we have information about the pink gel being confirmed by Zhang Zhen Red Digit, but I have no idea what it... Uh, here we go. For purpose of illustration, Dr. Bone drops an archaeological hat, um, and Pinky drops it. That's nice. So it'll be a crafting material, a different sticky bomb, a little colorization. Oh, pink slime staff. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, we have the slime staff. One damage? One damage isn't much. And for those of you who... Well, one damage is one damage. But hey, that little bit is kind of thing. Uh, flask of frost and fla uh, frost bullets. That's kind of a feature that we wanted to see um, for the... Uh, events because we have all kinds of other you know flasks that make effects for melee and so forth so why not uh, a grappling hook equipment slot now it's only one slot that the um, grappling hook takes but I guess it wouldn't hurt to have another grappling hook but we've had suggestions where they wanted all kinds of slots for different things like a wing slot which would in this case mean you have more accessories I guess that's something that depends on. It's being considered. We don't know if it'll be. Mouse over signs to read text. Well, originally right now you have to click on them to read what the text is. Would that be a good idea? Would it not? I think it would need to be an improvement on how much text you can put into the signs. I think the character limit's like 255 characters. So it's a, a one byte thing, I think. Um, summoner prefixes. That is probably one of the bigger suggestions. As you may know, the debut for summoners came in 1.2, and it had a huge gap of um, pre preferences for summoners because we didn't have much access to good weapons. Now, this, the slime staff was the weakest, and then we had a gap of maybe five, six damages to the, um, the hornet staff. And then there was a huge gap from that to the, uh, I believe it was the, uh, what do you call them? Fire, fire something? The little imps. Yeah, the imps. So there is still gaps right now, and I'm wondering if they add something new to that. That'd be nice. But summoner prefixes. Now let's go into that. And he did a very good job in going through that. He gave them names, which is nice. Uh, but here's some of them. Omnipotent increases damage, increases critical. Now, as far as I remember, summoners do not do critical damage, so I don't know if that is actually going to be inherited. Capacity increase, which means you'll be able to summon one extra of that specific um, minion. Damage not back, we got that. And then range. I would assume a range would either mean the minion can attack and mob from a certain distance, <clears throat> which the enemies recognized, which is down here, right here, uh, rather than how far you're able to summon it from off your screen. Okay, so that's that thing. So omnipotent seems to be the most preferable one. Vengeful is like the comparison to ruthless. Um, it's got high damage and it's got an increase in range, but you're lacking one extra capacity in this case. Crazed is for those people who want to do uh, uh, massing, but you lose damage. 15% is quite a lot of damage, and comparing to that, I would say you're losing not much, but you get a 2 plus increase in capacity. So there's that. I think what summoners will mostly look for is damage and capacity. I know a lot of people who would just love to have a hundred different minions following behind you right now, and just do incredible amount of damage. So, <clears throat> this is probably a huge update. Right now, the total amount of minions you can have is 9, including the buff that's required. So, if you had, like, Crazed, you'd be having 11, or if you had Omnipotent, you'd be having 10. I think, I think the maximum amount of minions we should even have is no more than 12. I think anything beyond that is quite too much. And the reason I'm saying this is because... I myself do a lot of modding and, and editing Terraria, and I have a way of summoning a lot of minions, a total of 30 to be exact, and let's just say the Tempest Staff plus 30 of those guys is a lagaholic. So this might be one of the most important aspects where they need to make sure performance doesn't get dwindled. Uh, fishing pole modifiers, I guess that would be something like 
and you get more loot out of your fishing and the strength of things like that <clears throat> and then the staff regrowth so moving on to the next thing um, the small additions to the blood moon this was one of posts that she said and she said I will say that we have been talking about giving the blood moon a bit more of love that is why I read this right they've been talking about it so the blood moon might get maybe more enemies stronger enemies or uh, AI changes perhaps one of those things but that would be good that some of the older things get updated now the biggest changes we've seen is <coughs> the user interface you can see there's a lot of graphical changes here um, we did get an additional new uh, party group so now there's a total of six uh, rather than you know oh, excuse me five not six five which the other one is just you're not in a group at all so there is six choices originally there's just you know five now there's graphical changes no oh, wait there is a hook equipment thing here I'm not sure what that'll do but that'll be interesting to see and <clears throat> that one right here is camera so you'll be able to capture stuff that will get into suit nice so here you have the five groups now the big changes we can see here the weapon we saw previously in Zanx's uh, GIF which does 200 damage miraculously number four here is some kind of doll and it looks like an alien this could be the item that's used to summon the lunar event now you, what you're seeing here is the person is dropping items into a chest but marking the items it does not want in the chest that's a good thing now you can see a couple of new blocks this looks like um, it could be fire just being recolored or it is an actual change but there are new blocks new doors new equipment uh, new chests here's the two rows and the new chest types that we have you'll see some graphical changes for some of the stations we have like for example the saw here it's now maybe it's not a saw but it could be it doesn't look like a saw it looks more like a wheel a stone wheel to sharpen your blades so I'm wondering if that means you can change the prefixes of your items without having to go through the goblin maybe <clears throat> moving on here is a little bit of the changes here the banking system which was suggested as you can see there's a savings now you have your money stored in the piggy bank and it automatically will allow you to purchase the items from an NPC so that'll save you the time of going back and forth another thing is screen capture a lot of people when they post their screenshots of the structures they have they have to use something like Terraforma or T-Edit you know, those are the most popular ones out there to show the full structure just like this of what it looks like now this is a big image if I were to click on it you you'd see it in full scale and it's JPEG which is slightly bad quality but maybe that's changeable so you'll be able to show off your designs there's a lot of things here um, buttons so we'll see what they do when the game when the game comes out with that update and another thing is you'll get to see more information on your mini map like where somebody died where somebody is and you can teleport to those people so that's a big big update there um, there is another enhancement section that we probably want to look at uh, actually this would be one of the first posts I saw now defining it was the problem <clears throat> ah yes, NPCs can sit in chairs now in in your houses, so that'll be a nice thing. Uh, world gen changes, including a couple of new bi biomes like the Sword and the Stone. Well, that sounds like uh, Zelda right there, or, or King Arthur, <laughs> maybe. Uh, they've changed the animations; their bodies aren't all wobbly. And look, if you look at the um, top one, especially the female, you can see that her belly button body shows up more often, and then you can see in this one it's more smooth so there's a change in that they're updating that another update is the crimson is getting an update and you can now place stairs more properly with the smart cursor so that will make things a lot easier with that this is the lunar event um, summoner supposedly they're worshipping it <laughs> you've seen the um, item the mount that allows you to do things and 
and a little bit of a facelift on the NPCs so they get a little bit of an update. So that will be a really good thing. Now there is one more thing that was updated and that was the enhancements to the progress of the world that you get to see. If I can find it. I know it was here we go. <clears throat> this one is the part where you now see a progress bar of your events. A ruler design that shows you how many blocks you really need, which is good. And of course a couple of die changes which makes it look a little more interesting as you can see. There's a little bit more of a, a shader style effect to them. I don't really much like the rainbow thing. Uh, it gives you seizures, but it's still fun to watch. Now the last thing that we saw was a progress bar and it disappeared. I know I had it somewhere but there was a progress bar I think I can pull it up somewhere <laughs> if I can find it. Uh, let's see the progress bar was and it's probably in my history I'm sorry I missed that one but it is one of the um, significant other uh, da, 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 this is page 21 I'm actually disappointed that I missed it, but I know it was here. <clears throat> here. Oh yes, we know that Sanks is part of the development team now. She's actually learning how to do stuff. Like, as you can see, Snoop Dogg added something, Skiff added something, Zangs added some stuff too. So she is actually working, and you know that 1.3 is the last uh, update that Red Digit himself will be working on. He'll probably assist them, but he's got more adventures. Here it is, the progress bar. Terraria no longer shows you text and percentages and now shows you a progress bar. And while that progress bar is, you'll see on the left side it's the color of corruption and then the right side is normal. This could mean that maybe this bar will tell you what type of corruption you will encounter in this world instead of having to load the world run around left and right trying to find out, oh, is it finally corruption or is it finally crimson? So this will probably tell you, okay, this world's going to have corruption. If you didn't like it, delete it, start again. So it'll save you time, perhaps. But it's also very nice and visual. So these are some of the updates that are coming out. Another few things that are coming out is Mac and Linux update, but that's not officially set yet. They're working on it. They're trying to get Mac support and Linux. So this will be something that will be important for those people who don't have Windows. Um, sorry for those of you who don't have Windows. So these are the major changes that are coming up. There's a bunch of other ones we missed like changes of drop rates and so forth. But we can expect this update to be as big as 1.2 was with a lot of uh, things and I would recommend anyone to start the game from new. Keep your old character if you want to but start the game brand new because it looks like they're changing things that are also from the previous update. So you might want to go back so that you don't miss anything. <clears throat> so that's it. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, I'm not a beta tester. Don't ask. Even if I was, I wouldn't tell you that would be the case. Um, the uh, beta testers will not be releasing information they're not supposed to they have an agreement so the only way you're gonna see a new spoiler is from the developers or Zanx herself uh, if you see anywhere that somebody says oh I have spoilers for you uh, it's probably wrong and if it is a suspected beta tester don't forget to report them because they're not supposed to do that um, as for that I will be broadcasting tonight of this day for a free copy of Terraria and that goes for um, for everybody, uh, including Twitch and YouTube. One copy can be earned through the YouTube, and one can be earned through the broadcast. Uh, more information about that will be posted on the video and anywhere else where people need information for. So, I hope you're all excited for 1.3 as I am. I am very happy to seeing those changes. They're really good. So I hope to see you guys 
in the next video. Uh, as always, I am Marcus101RR. Don't be a dick, hit escape and quit, and I will see you guys in another video. Bye-bye.